Hello and welcome uh, with this new broadcast of our podcast where we talk with people from all over the world who are working each in their own way to promote peace. And today we have a, an extremely severe situation happening in Gaza at the moment. So it is most opportune to talk about this urgently and to try and understand what's really going on. So today I'm very happy that I'm here with writer and journalist uh, Umayya Abu Hanna. From, uh, she's Palestinian-Israeli, uh, uh, who lived a long time in Finland and now lives in the Netherlands, and knows very well the context and uh, has all the information. I think we need to know to, to be able to, to ju judge the current uh, horror and catastrophe that is taking place in Gaza. So, um, Umayya, thank you very much for being on our show. Um, to introduce yourself, would you like to add anything about um, about yourself? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, in short, I am a Palestinian. Uh, I was born and raised in Israel. I'm Israeli. I have been 42 years in Europe. I'm 62 years old. Uh, so it gives me uh, an in-depth on of knowledge about uh, things seen from different perspectives. Thank you very much. Um, if we start, like maybe maybe just start with um, how are you witnessing how, how what 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 goes on in your mind and in your soul? Let's say when you see when you started to see after the seventh of October, the bombs falling again on on Gaza. Uh, as a privileged person living in peace in in the U.S. in Europe, I think we need to use our privilege by using our brains. Uh, and uh, we have to be focused. And what I see is a strategy to destroy the understanding of the situation. It, it is called the strategy to destroy. It's called it's too complex. And the other strategy is called it's relative. So it depends who is doing what, who is facing what. So, for example, I'll have to double check, but uh, I think it was... Uh, Israeli uh, minister who was interviewed by the BBC, I'll, I'll double check, uh, who said right away that we are dealing, um, that Israel is not responsible for the deaths in Gaza, that it is Hamas. This is the Israeli rhetoric. And then he compared it to the Second World War. I think it's uh, Naftali Bennett, maybe? Yes, Naftali Bennett. Sorry, yeah. now you correct me. Uh, so they are used to this rhetoric where nobody stops them. There is a taboo called, uh, it's not the elephant in the room, it's the dinosaur. <laughs> uh, so the minute uh, he throws the Second World War, everybody has to shut up. And when he mentions the Second World War, he compares, uh, um, he asks, are the Americans responsible for the death of Germans when they uh, came to help? And nobody corrects him that the occupier now is Israel, a nuclear power that had produced the biggest, largest refugee group in the world and still is producing under the eyes and support of the West. It's producing and it had planned, they are planning to send the people in Gaza who are over 80% refugees already, once, mm -hmm. twice, and maybe three times, Many of them are from Yaffa, which is now Tel Aviv, because they came by boat. So they were kicked to the sea. Very often cities on the sea were kicked to the sea. So they came down to, to Gazi. Many of them are from Haifa. Many of them are six kilometers away from their wall, their villages, towns. So they plan to make one more <laughs> wave of refugees. It's very interesting. They say there's a white desert. Mm -hmm. Send them to the desert, and mm -hmm. um, so the 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 switching it, to focus on this is just to keep it simple, and say it doesn't matter. We're not living a tribal time. It doesn't matter if it's X or Y. What is the name of the group that is doing or being done to? So, the answer is very simple. The source of the of the problem is 
the largest refugee group in the world wants to return home. Until 75 years, Palestinians are officially, according to the UN, the largest refugee group in the world. And because they're refugees, there are problems because they want to come home and Israel doesn't want to allow it. That's the, the whole thing. So if the West and Europe wants to think how to solve this, this is how to solve, that is the problem. The second part is why isn't it solved? Why can't they return if they are on the borders and in the borders? Uh, there are many Palestinian refugees. This sound, might sound very strange. Palestinian refugees, they're called internal refugees inside Israel. People who were not in their homes when they were taken, ethnically cleansed the villages. So they're called internal refugees. Can you imagine you're being an internal refugee in Holland when you are Dutch? Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so the, the answer is depending where you come from. So if you're from the West and Europe, what is the, the way that we have found to build societies? And the way that we have found to build societies is to follow law and order. And the second thing is democracy, equality. These are the two rules. And if these are the two rules that we have, how do they, how can we apply them to when we deal with foreign countries and their, their wars? So we saw that thing taken to, to Ukraine. And we think, no, you cannot ethnically cleanse people. No, you cannot turn them into refugees. We know who the occupier is. We know who the occupied is. Now, when we deal with Palestine, the refugees want to return. OK, what's the problem? Why can't they return? It's because it's a state built on ethnic supremacy. It's a state built on one religion, one ethnicity, and the rest would be uh, um, well, they are not officially part, uh, like equal citizens. So that is what we're dealing with. Now, if you're asking um, what has happened um, for Europe, it's very good to always start the 7th of October. <laughs> uh, where have you been until the 7th of October? Where has Europe been? Uh, because there have been, until now, if you check uh, the amount of children, there's a new law in Israel where you can uh, um, put children in prison. They are like political uh, prisoners because they are not, they're anyway, children in prison that have been tortured, still are. Uh, Israeli prisons are full of political prisoners who have never been charged. So there's a system of oppression even during times of peace. And then the killings of um, the people in Gaza who tried very peacefully in 2018, there was absolutely non-violent, no arms were involved. It was called the big march of return. So the refugees in Gaza who are the majority were just trying to tell the world, why would they do a march? To tell the world that we are refugees who want to come back home. The second part of this is that uh, the naming, the framing, it's about words. Mm -hmm. So Gaza has been uh, sieged from land, air, and sea. Everybody knows these three words. But at the same time, we have to remember that Israel has calculated publicly, calculated the minimum amount of calories that are allowed to enter Gaza. So they would keep them on the verge of starvation. And that is a public announcement by Israel. So when you keep people on the verge of starvation, you keep them mentally, you know, so many children are malnourished, people are in poverty. The second part of this, now I'm speaking about the physical um, situation in Gaza. According to the UN, 2020, starting 2020, Gaza was unlivable. One main reason is that 96% of their drinking water is poisonous. So they've been poisoned slowly. When you have UN saying that your drinking water is poisonous. How, how is it poisonous? Is it poisoned or is it just bad? No, not quality? poisoned. It's, it's, it's polluted, polluted. And Israel on purpose will not allow them because all the resources of water are um, uh, under the Israeli control. Huh? Mm. So uh, 
their water, if you think of their physical life, yeah. And then when every time Israel bombards them, they cannot flee. They're the only population who's not allowed to flee. According to international law, you're allowed to flee. Although many people say, stay mm -hmm. there. I say, it's none of your business. If people are too tired, no. then they have to, write. so they cannot flee. They cannot eat. They cannot drink properly. And this is during the time of peace. And mm -hmm. when they peacefully marched, they were shot by snipers on the Israeli side. And I think it was 172 of these shot people were refugees, the rest were Gazans. And then many were shot, uh, like there were nurses that were shot by snipers. So it's not like bombing. Mm -hmm. So it was intentional. Um, ambulance drivers, uh, journalists, and there, there was a system, if you check the visualizing palace, and you will find very, very good uh, information, visualizing Palestine. Mm -hmm. So they were aiming very often, the, like there was a system of, there was a plan of how to shoot. So it was the eyes and the kneecaps. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is the kind of place people were living in during peace time. So it's sieged. They mm -hmm. are kept nearly starving. They are poisoned by their water. They're not allowed to even build, you know, properly. So Israel doesn't allow a uh, um, certain amount of cement or wood or many, many other things to build after bombing. So, uh, and the many times the doctors are aimed at, uh, because of the situation, many of the infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, uh, that needs the, the people to keep the place up are not there. Yeah. And so now when you have a seized people who cannot escape, most of them are refugees. And then you say no food, even that minimum, no food, no water, no fuel. No electricity. You, yes. You have kidnapped 2.1 million people. You are kidnapping people who are you, you are starving. They are dying of dehydration. We did not get news because international media is not allowed in Gazi. There's not a single media in Razi city. You have them outside. There are locals who can represent somebody here and there. The last um, uh, um, um, Al Jazeera reporter, I think you know about him, They he moved away with his family to the South because Israel said it's safer. I think it happened two days ago. And his home with his wife and daughter and son was mm -hmm. specifically uh, bomb and they died. So thank you very much, uh, Umaya. You you gave uh, you, you you told us a lot in in a, in a very short time. So to briefly summarize, we can say that uh, we have to first understand. You say the situation, people make it sound more complicated than it is, and the situation, if I understand you correctly, is basically the most important thing to realize is that Palestinians have become the most the largest refugee group uh, in the world which is not recognized. Um, and many of them have ended up in Gaza uh, uh, as a result of ethnic cleansing of the coast cities, among which Haifa, uh, Jaffa, <clears throat> and other cities who, who like many of them who live in Gaza have been, have been moved there through the first Nakba in, in 48. And what you've also explained to us in, in detail is that we have to realize that Gaza is on all sides. The air, sea, and land is closed. Food has been rationed, electricity, um, building materials, medicine, everything has been restricted already during peacetime for, I think, 16, 17 years now. So if, if you see that situation, if you understand that, and you see that uh, Gaza is is locked in from all sides, and then you understand that it is now being fiercely bombed. How how would you legally maybe describe a situation like that? First, I want to correct. It is recognized as Palestinians are recognized according to the UN as the largest refugee group. Yeah, but I, I see. I, yeah. What I wanted to yeah, say yeah. is that it's not the recognized by media yes. that this is actually this is actually the case at the moment yeah. we think we don't think of palestinians in the first place when we talk about re refugees no um it is because 
I think the longer it takes, uh, so they become the many Palestinian refugees who arrived, for instance, in Holland and elsewhere, are registered as Syrian refugees. Yeah, and true. Because yeah. cannot register as Palestinian, Palestinians are stateless. stateless. Can I ask a can I ask a little question about that? Because there are people uh, when you say that who who say. Well, the Arab states are to blame because why didn't they give them passports in Syria, Egypt, and Jordan? Or Jordan, maybe they did. But like, how, how would you respond to that? If people I would say? respond to that as what? Uh, why don't you all just absorb uh, the Ukrainians so that they would never come back? It's your responsibility. They're Europeans. Make mm -hmm. them all Dutch without anything else. Make the Ukrainian part stateless mm -hmm. and make them here. They're your sisters and brothers. They're here. They don't have to come back. That's my answer. Yeah. Um, regarding how would you see that legally, uh, many uh, official organizations have called uh, Gazi as the largest uh, um, open air prison. Mm -hmm. That's not true. <clears throat> prison means you are imprisoned for some legal, like they, they have committed something. They have not committed anything. If you look at the situation, there is something that, like if you ask GPT, if you put these ingredients, you know, what is this cake called? If it is made of cacao and uh, chocolate, uh, it's a chocolate cake. So it is a concentration camp. Mm -hmm. And when you, they are kidnapped. These people are kidnapped. Nobody is uh, even trying to get them out. <laughs> Europe and the West is now thinking, how can we, bombard and kill people who are starved, without water, without fuel, without arms, mm -hmm. without the possibility to, to flee, facing a nuclear, nuclear state who is not alone with the West. How can we bombard them and at least ethnically cleanse them and put them in the desert? Don't think of, of any name. Let's say they are Jews. 2.0 million Jews who are seized from air, land, and sea. They are kept on a minimum diet, and now during the war, they were not allowed food. Uh, they have now been, there have, has been over 7,000 deaths. Most of them are children, and they are Jews, and the Arabs are doing this, and the world is supporting. There. It's very simple. It's, it's very simple. Case. Yeah. Yeah. So I think if we want to see the problem, why are we here? Uh, <clears throat> I have only two explanations. One is uh, my biggest shock was that I thought I am in the West and I believed what the West says. Mm -hmm. So if I lived in Finland, if I live in Holland, um, the, the the Netherlands has the ICC in the Hague, just near the the uh, parliament, near the government, just a few steps. So you would think we're conscious. So international law, human rights are number one, and everything else is. It doesn't matter are these people whatever whoever. And then I realized no. So I was thinking that for me, the way I see it is that Europe was anti-Semitic and contributed to genocide. And this has never ended. Europe is anti-Semitic today. Palestinians are Semites. And Europe is complicit in genocide. So for me, there you can look at this as a continuity. And I do think it is a continuity. The second thing is, if you don't want to see it as a continuity, you can think about it as, uh, internalized and inst institutionalized guilt from the Second World War that has never been faced. So part of, you know, if you have been a killer, if you have been a serial killer, you end up in jail and then you have to, you go to therapy or if, if they're going to let you out, <laughs> you deal with it. Europe sent its well well uh, sent or the its uh, its uh, um, jewish population its own citizens ran away and they moved to palestine and that was kind of like let's shut our ears and eyes 
it's none of our business, it's over. And now we can teach the rest of the world how to be civilized. I was often, so often lectured about, look how Europe came out of the Second World War and we became civilized, we rebuilt our, our um, uh, continent and we built it on human rights. And so we've learned. And now I see that it's not true. It's not true at all. The way Europeans and the West are speaking is like tribal gangsters, like serious gangsters, who are like, I don't even understand if I was a, 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 like any person who's been to high school, if I was the Dutch prime minister, if I was a head of a media, Dutch media, I would think twice thinking like, there is a genocide, it's clear. You don't have to, like, if you check it, it's a genocide. There's a dehumanization. Even if you don't want to think about it, just go and see what the Israeli uh, politicians are saying. Human animals, uh, we're, we're going to, uh, the, the, I can send you the, the links, but they said, we're not targeting uh, specific places. We are bombarding in general. Um, we have to go for 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 uh, max. We are going for maximum damage, not for yes. for maximum for specific damage. Yeah. There's so many like, and you are supporting that. Plus, three weeks ago, Europe was uh, like bewildered and scared and scandalized by the Israeli government. And why? Why was the Israeli government facing so many uh, so much? Uh, um, resistance from inside Israel. What was the Israeli government mainly doing? Mainly, it was breaking the legal system of Israel, which was apartheid. But again, even, even for its own citizens, the main work was to break any legal system, judges, courts, everything. And that's why the Israeli other half break, was rising. So it's a government that breaks the legal system of its own land. It's a government where everybody's saying we are genocidal in clear words. They like in clear words. And what does Europe say? We want to support a government that is genocidal and has no, like, does not carry any sense of legality against sieged refugees, mainly which are 50% children who have been bombarded. They've faced four wars the, in the last 20 years. And I was thinking, aren't you aware that the ICC is there? Mm -hmm. That you will end up as war criminals supporting war crimes? So, so it's clear, I think, exactly uh, as you say, that we are... A hundred percent. Well, not we, because because I think among the population, there's a. You have to make a distinction. I think between population and 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 uh, and, and politics. And I think in politics, it's much worse than than among the general pu uh, public. And it's uh, the general public opinion is also shifting. I think, but in, among politicians, it's it's still as bad, or, or maybe even worse than it than it ever was, because now it's so visible that this genocide is taking place. We are still like 100% behind Israel. So you've, let's talk about the causes of, of that, of this sort of almost unconditional support. You've mentioned two things already. You've mentioned like an inherent racism, uh, uh, anti-Semitism, as you can call it. Like this is just a continuation. Only the Jews have been replaced for the Muslims in general, I would say, and part Palestinians in particular now, or Hamas or however you want to however it is being framed at the moment but you see indeed like also in parliament you see like these right-wing parties are gladly joining the the genocide train let's say um but then in the, another another cause you mentioned is guilt let's say we we've sort of dumped our guilt in 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 palestine and now we're sort of we're clean again um but what what else is behind it because it's so blatant it's so obvious as you have said it's so visible and the Israelis don't even deny that they're going for genocide. Uh, there's so many sort of super harsh statements by officials and 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 semi-officials saying that uh, you know destroy everything, kill them all and all those kind of things. Huh? So um how like is, is this sufficient? Is this sufficient 
explanation to say that it's guilt and it's and it's uh, racism, or is there is there something more at play? What what else can we say? How 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 can we else we can we explain uh, sort of so called human rights loving politicians to to go for this to join the Israeli cause? I want to correct one thing, although it sounds like a very small detail, but it's important. I'm not religious but my heritage is Christian hmm. and um, Christian Palestinians are the oldest group of first their oldest Christian community for obvious reasons my father is from Nazareth he's also not religious uh, but Christian religion uh, Christian Palestinians are the oldest uh, uh, Palestinian group that has been continuously living there I want to add a small thing that again doesn't seem very uh, relevant but it is just to help you exercise the, the thought. Uh, Palestine was mostly, largely, um, the majority of Palestinians were Christians until the 12th century. So when the Arab Muslims arrived in the 7th century in Palestine, Palestine stayed as the majority of Christians. What happened in the 11th century that turned Palestinians mostly to Muslims? What happened in the 11th century? The Europeans came as okay. crusaders. Mm -hmm. And when the crusaders arrived in Palestine, that was mainly, the majority was Christian. They killed left and right because they felt that this is their place. Hallelujah. Uh, so Palestinians turned to Muslims in the 12th century, like the majority. And so the so-called minority of Palestinians that is still Christian we we you can ask us if you ask about my identity you can ask us to tell you about the dynamics of this so because often europeans see it as a tribal thing they say you know israel jewish state muslims blah, blah, blah. it's not the way i see palestinians are whoever has lived on that land whatever was its name that land whoever has lived since um the natufians thirteen thousand years back continuously until today. That's when I speak about Palestinians, I mean all these people, whoever is there. So to understand what is going on now, uh, I think there's a lot of work to turn this into, for instance, in Holland, even in, in uh, Amsterdam, that is supposed to be, Amsterdam is a city that is made of um, small mi minorities. It has passed the stage of having a majority. So Amsterdam is made of different minorities. And even then, with our open-minded woman mayor, she invited Jews and Muslims to speak about the situation. I was in shock. Like, what kind of tribal person are you? So we are, we here in the West are turning this into a tribal thing. And it is not a tribal question. It is a dynamic question. So when people take that stance, I say, hello, I'm Christian now. Now, everybody, <laughs> get out of the picture. It's not about religion. So if we want to step, uh, I think there is a, a very clear anti-Semitic or racist attitude towards whoever has lived the land. Uh, uh, and because most of the Israeli Jews have been Western or the ones in power, you recognize yourself in them, but it makes them not really Middle Eastern, not really, they don't speak a language, they have shut all the borders around the country. I was born in a place, uh, Palestine, until 1948, until for you know millions of year, years has never been cut off the region, never. So basically Palestine was part of an area called Sham region. So Palestine, Lebanon and Syria are the same region because we share culture, history, cuisine, sense of humor, music. And we've, the intermarriage has been big, the business has been big. It has been very cosmopolitan, very. Palestinian society has been very cosmopolitan and diverse. And now, the, it is so much easier to now say these are the Muslims, and the minute you say Muslims, for instance, Macron said, let's declare Hamas like ISIS. He didn't say, let's say, uh, let's see if Hamas is not good for us, who would represent the, the Palestinian resistance that we can talk to, like Zelensky. 
Let's find who is the resistance. We don't like the way Hamas does it. Okay, let's find the resistance because there should be, there's an occupier and occupied. Okay, people, let's find your resistance and we'll talk to them and we don't like Hamas. No, he wants to, <laughs> he wants to bombard the whole place, the way they have succeeded with ISIS, the way they have succeeded with Al-Qaeda. Now we are, so you can see that it is like, a, it is like a cartoon even like the, the head of state of France is turning this into cartoon. It's easier. And when you turn things into cartoon, it means that you are a racist. You just don't want your, it is, you have the power, you have the sticks and guns and bombs and nuclear bombs. So you don't want to do the, the, the math and it's, you don't want to exercise anything. The other reason is, as we say, they are not that stupid. The West is not that stupid. It is a strategic uh, um, planning. So when I hear NOS uh, journalists being asked, uh, what will be the plan after this war? And they say, they laughed. They two, there were two journalists and said, they laughed and said, nobody knows, but we think it will be Fatah, you know, because they know a few words. And it will be maybe like, like the Abbas would rule Ghazi. Are you stupid? All this money, if the US alone is sending extra, it usually sends 3 billion extra hundred billion dollars to kill these people who are starved, you know, there is a plan. It's not, it's not, okay, we'll take Abbas to rule there, no. So one idea has been all the time that they would have the oil route going from the, the east to the shores of the Mediterranean, where Israel would be leading this huge economic uh, project, it makes it even more strategic. Tel Aviv is built, so Ghazi, when you bomb it, it's then you can just make it uh, uh, the last stop of um, both the oil and also from the uh, far east, the whole like region would be, that's why they are dealing with Saudis who have also uh, been responsible to chopping their own journalists. They are very good friends now. <laughs> Uh, so there is a plan of a wider strategic system, also the fear of um, America and Europe, of the rise of uh, um, China, India uh, power. So that's very important. So I don't think that the love of the Americans is only pure, uh, it's, it's not that simple mm -hmm. in that sense. Not on, No, it's not complicated, but there are layered interests. Yeah. It's like when you help your neighbor, you help your neighbor because uh, they're your neighbor, you help them because they speak the language, if they speak the same language, and you help them if you can, you know, if they have a tree, they're, they're going to give you the pears or you're going to sit in the garden. So um, there are multiple layers about, about uh, why, mm -hmm. uh, but the most, okay, like I think what uh, uh, the Syrian president did to his people is horror, but he never said, you know, I'm the the I'm going to teach you about human rights, or I'm not following uh, uh, international law. But mm. when Europe does it and the West does it, it breaks my heart. Most Palestinians here in the West have been devastated. Mainly, they said, we know what Israel does, but but Europe. So we feel extremely scared, extremely scared. And if you think of demonstrations or just living in the West. We feel that Israel has made the rules. We feel that Israel is, is responsible for our, like everything that we talk about, all the espionage here, all the, the like the, uh, Holland said, we're going to check any connections to Hamas and they they make the, the like, what is Hamas? The, so we are scared because we feel that we're being ruled by Israel, not how by do you, you. How, how do you see that? How do you feel that? What 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 concrete examples do you can you tell us of of uh, that make you scared? Well, for instance, when uh, when you see that social because we don't have a, a media coverage from Gaza, mm -hmm. and now when the social media is being banned, like for instance, I on Palestine that had six million followers has been just it disappeared. Mm -hmm. When you start seeing that the like. You, the main thing that Europe is saying is uh, freedom of speech. Then Holland, in the in the um, in the Parliament, did not allow 
one member of the parliament to mention in her speech, quoting Netanyahu, the sentence from the river to the sea. So instead of asking what is from the river to the sea, from the river Jordan to the Mediterranean, Palestinians are asking whatever system you have from the river to the sea, it has to have equal rights. Mm -hmm. And when they say from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, it means that that historic land should have equal rights and freedom. No walls, no mm -hmm. siege, no starvation, that is the concept. So some people want uh, one democratic state, which I stand for, one democratic state with whoever is living there, the Israeli Jews, the Palestinians, and the refugees can return. And it becomes one state as the most obvious solution Euro Europe would have, hmm. okay, and equal. Others think it should be two states, which I would find very sad, but they would be like, they would have equality and they would have equal rights, no more refugees, again, from the river to the sea. So when you start banning things that um, uh, Israel bans, when you start saying that the Palestinian flag is scary, I mean, if the gay flag is scary to some heterosexuals, we say, deal with it, you know, these are, so Palestinians are human beings. We're being dehumanized systematically by like legal ways. When they say we're going to now look for any connections, like we are under the microscope for everybody's connections to Hamas, which doesn't, I, I don't know what that means. All the Palestinians felt that we are now like game for, whoever. Mm -hmm. So um, we've mentioned like this racism, we've mentioned the guilt, we've mentioned also economic interests by the West, uh, the oil, potential oil pipelines that can play a role in, uh, but what I still don't understand is sort of the way that, I understand it from racist parties politically, but I like, like how many people still sort of follow this also the line, you know, Israel has the, the right to self-defense, you know, look what Hamas did on, on, on 7th of October. I see that, that uh, is it, uh, yeah, are people secretly thinking the one thing but don't dare to say it? Or are uh, are they really convinced of the, the right of Israel to bomb a, a population into oblivion? Or are they just not badly informed? Or are they um, you know, when they willingly sort of support the actions against the Palestinians in Gaza, like uh, it, it's it's so it's it's it, as you say, we all know, we all speak about human rights, especially when it's you know our enemies are committing war crimes like Russia or or China. We know everything about the what China does to Uyghurs. We know. Uh, that it's bad to attack another country like like uh, Russia did, and we know uh, we know it as, as we know it from our enemies. Let's say, but why? Yeah, sorry if I if I keep asking the same question over. It's because I don't understand really that we that it's so hard to to mention international law for for when it comes to Israel committing the most blatant war crimes, like. I cannot imagine, like, say that our own parliamentarians care care much about these economic ideas of of the U.S. their economic plans, you know. Um, I'm maybe sorry if I'm asking the same question all uh, all over again, but it's it's so hard to imagine uh, that like simple or simple people. That that's not a nice word. Ordinary people. We 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 see you straight through what's happening. If you close in two million people, it's a stupid thing. I have to tell. Like I asked ChatGPT what it thought about. You know the 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 so-called uh, let's say imaginary situation where you have an uh, where you have a city of two million people closed in and you cut off water, food, medical supplies, um, electricity, fuel, and then start bombing it. And and I was just curious what ChatGPT would think, and immediately would say like it would be a horrendous situation and this would be major war crimes, genocide, and the whole world community will. Will will uh, you know speak out against it in order to make it stop? That's what Chat GPT thinks. <laughs> and then uh, you know this is to, maybe a strange ad anecdote, but um, so it's 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 you know even even Chat GPT has some basic morals, let's say, but in the real world, 
it it doesn't work like that. We 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 give Ezra a free pass to to commit these these horrors. I just I'm sorry I I just can't no, grasp. No, no, not sorry. It's because this is this is if we had answers it would be easy. But yeah. um, one thing about this is that does any population is does the occupied population have the right to resist? Mm -hmm. And when the resistance has been very very peaceful for years, I would tell everybody to watch Finkelstein. Mm -hmm. His interview, his latest interview, he's a he's a Holocaust, uh, his parents are Holocaust survivors. Mm -hmm. And he said that he had a very difficult uh, time thinking ethically, how would he think about the resistance in Palestine, in Gaza? How And he, he it's a very, very interesting, uh, um, he tells about his mother and he thinks because he's an ethical person he's he's a thinker so watch his his um Finkelstein's latest interview so do occupied people who are sieged with no intention of there's nothing in the horizon nobody's going to let them out nobody everybody has totally not only forgotten about them they are having parties out outside the wall you know if you think about a rave party um the Gazans could hear the rave party. It was that near. Uh, and the young people in Israel carry arms. They go to the they go to the army. So they were most of them were soldiers just in civilian, like during their free time. Again, I hope nobody thinks that I think anybody should be killed. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. We're just putting some facts near each other. And we're saying also that what uh, the, um, it wasn't only Hamas, it was multiple different uh, fractions of different uh, things. But anyway, what they did was also horrific. But now we will also ask, what are our uh, occupied refugees, besieged occupied refugees who have been uh, 75 years, many of them, occupied and refugees with no solution whatsoever, no effort. Are they occupied to resist? And if we say yes, then you ask how, and then you check, have they gone through the these, what alternatives have they taken? And then you think, what else can they do? And now we drop Hamas. We say Hamas should go in the trash. They should kill, kill them all. Okay. Now, when you are left without Hamas and with these people, are these people allowed to resist this nuclear power and the whole West coming against them? So Israel has every right to defend itself. And now these people, let's say they are totally without Hamas and they are being bombarded. Are they allowed to resist? And if you say yes, like Ukrainians, then how, what would you accept? And I would say it's very, very shocking that Europe does not support the resistance of occupied people bombarded by a nuclear power, but at least stop it, stop it, or clean your hand, wash your hands, say none of our business, sorry, this is too complicated, we don't have the time, we don't have the energy, it's too dirty, we are not taking part in the genocide. Goodbye. We have other business. Mm -hmm. I I would accept that, but to be complicit is something beyond me. And mm -hmm. all these parties that are, many of my friends, I'm in shock. Like also in Finland and in Holland and wherever, who are just silent, mm -hmm. just silent and supportive of. The Ursula, von, Ursula von der Leyen going immediately to Tel Aviv, uh, giving her support. Rutte, Macron, Olaf Scholz, Meloni, we all call to Israel to, to give our support. Even Rutte, I think, said in parliament that there, there might come a moment that we might have to send military support to Israel during a genocide. This is, um, okay, I think we can state that this is beyond our belief. Beyond our, um, I, I, I could have never imagined that it would go so far, really. I think we are really off track. 
And I want to mention something, and I don't, I don't know if you agree, because I think eventually this is, um, we might all say that we are defending Israel or something, you know, against its enemies or whatever, against terrorists. But what we don't see, like, I, I refuse to believe that we protect here the legitimate interests of Israeli uh, citizens, you know, because as you see, the region is boiling. Um, uh, Jordan is fragile against uh, the many Palestinian uh, people living there. Every, the general population seems well, super agitated against what's happening, of course. Uh, we have Lebanon in, in the north with Hezbollah. You will have Turkey, uh, Erdogan uh, talking uh, straight, uh, straight condemnations. We have Iran. If it would come, like if if this takes longer, I, I you know, the all bets are off in my in my view. I mean, then we we are actually actually while saying we are defending Israel, we are actually endangering Israel by not protecting it. Let's say against itself, by not protecting it against its own sort of dark, uh, extreme nationalist, uh, genocidal talk. How, how do you see that? I see it is clear, clear uh, that Europe is, whatever now happens slowly, you say soon, Europe is pushing to the Third World War. Hmm. It is as like any idiot can see it. They're playing a game with a Third, war, third World War. China, Iran, Turkey, uh, of course, Jordan, poor Jordan. Jo the Jordanian queen, by the way, is Palestinian. She's from uh, ah, Kerem. She's Palestinian. Both parents, 100% Palestinian. Ah, and I never she's, know. Yes. And the, most of the population, the majority of the population in Jordan are Palestinian refugees. Mm. The rest now in the cities are other refugees from Iraq. They have a lot of refugees. So it's a, they cannot take any more. Uh, so uh, Europe is being a cannibal again. And Europe is starting without Europe and the West. Things will not escalate that quickly. But with the West and mainly Europe, Europe is pushing playing a game, Europe, with a third world war. Now, if you think about defending Israel from a different point of view, I am also Israeli, and I think whatever, let's say my, my country was Arab, Palestinian, and it was the opposite. We would have Jews uh, being killed in the West Bank. We would have Jews uh, uh, in Gaza who are sieged and bombarded. I would have the same values. I know that because I also have um, two pairs of uh, Jewish cousins. I know, I know it's not about, and there are so many uh, Jews in the world who are thinking about okay. it's not tri not a tribal way of thinking. You think mm. occupied, occupier, human rights, international law, and then it doesn't matter which tribe is under what. So uh, as Israeli who is loyal to the land, I am against my country. It's like you can be Russian and against Putin. You can be uh, you can be Syrian and against your your uh, government because you love the land. If you love the land, if you really like, if you think about it, if you love the land, be who you whatever, you don't kill it. You don't ethnically cleanse the land you love. You don't kill the people who are on the land. You cannot. You don't have about 700 ethnically cleansed villages that you cover up. The, the, what Israel does is like a criminal every stage. You ethnically cleanse and then you cover it up. You do not uh, um, poison water. They do have, they put cement in, 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 the, for, in the West Bank. You don't, you don't build walls on the, on the land. If you love the land, you do not you do not do all this. So it doesn't matter if you're Israeli Jewish or whatever, you cannot do that to the land. So, so if yeah, I, I think if you want to protect whoever is there, Israel, you support with the systems that the, the international community that this globe has built step by step 
over tens of years, which are called international law. You hold it accountable and human rights. And that's how you protect it because international law is made as a structure to keep this globe functioning, to keep it wholesome, to keep it not falling out of place. And when you take that off, you are already endangering Israel, the region, the whole world. So how would you describe, and I'm sorry, I, I don't know, how much time do you still have? As much mm -hmm. as you want. Okay. Because of course we can go for hours and hours and that's what we cannot do, I think. But let's say, how would you describe people? You say the people who are running Israel at the moment, they're certainly not uh, doing this out of love for the land. They're also not doing it, I think you have to say, out of... Uh, out of a general interest for the Israeli population, whether they be Palestinian or Israeli, because they're actually endangering. Like people say, you know, this this famous, you know, propaganda quote, like without Israel, every Jew is a, un, uh, I say how I, every Jew is an, uh, uh, like a, uh, is uh, like free to be killed, some, something like that. Huh? There's this like Zionist slogan, um, Israel is sort of the, the 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 protector of the Jewish people, you know. And actually, so you you see, it's it's not true. I think there's no country now where where Jews are more in danger than than in Israel. So they're not doing it out of a sense to protect Jewish people. Um, they are not doing it um, for religious reasons. I think because uh, well, of course, a certain interpretation of religion might might align with these these people but like uh, the, the people that i regard as as most religiously jewish uh, they are horrified by what's happening and even also atheist jewish people say you know so they're not like they're not doing it okay let's they're not doing it for religious reasons because jewish religion i think is against everything that's being happening against stealing land against uh, killing innocent people against uh, expelling people. Jewish religion is against that, I presume. They're not doing it also. They, they also say, okay, this is to protect, you know, to give the people a homeland from the Holocaust, let's say. But but even many, many, many Holocaust survivors have said this is, you know, killing another people, uh, you know, using the, the, the Holocaust as a as a pretext to, to, to expelling and killing and putting other people in concentration camps is is yeah is it oxym is it oxymoron is it is it, is a cruel thing and and, and abhorrent thing so if you see all that all these reasons cannot sort of hold up to scrutiny so who are these people then and what are they doing who are the people of you know who who so staunchly defend sort of Israel's you know current policies of uh, of destruction basically who are they then what what are what are their interests really. You have to remember that uh, the Israeli government are democratically elected. Mm -hmm. And if you go and live in the land, you have to be in the army for a few years and you have you end up carrying guns and killing people. It's not, you know, like, or the possibility, you're ready to do that. Then in 2018, Arabic was taken away. It is. It was, it became a, like a clearly only Jewish um, state. So I would say that this state that is technically, in every way you look at it, there's nothing hidden. It is a supremacist state built on one ethnic group ruling, not only better, ruling and occupying because they, they have the power of your life, everything, life and death another group and continue continuing now with ethnically cleansing a new part you know it's living on the blood of refugees it is so i would say uh, that this apartheid state by any measure you have it it's an apartheid state they say this is like this is what it is a it is very complex to have israel doesn't have a um, constitutional uh, law because it's impossible to to define what is a Jew nowadays. So if you don't speak Hebrew, if you're not religious, if you don't not from the land, you don't know the land. So it's very hard because we live in in a world that is normal, 
you know, I can marry you and somebody else. And you don't have to say now you're not clean, you're clean. So the way this apartheid state is built is anti-Semitic, I think. I don't think- Can you explain that? Yeah, so genocide is not kosher, I think. So if you have a state that is built on hierarchy and violence, that is what apartheid is. You want to keep your supremacy and in order to keep supremacy, you have to use violence to keep the, the, the rest of the people, the other people oppressed so that they don't think they're equal. You have to hit them all the time. And that in itself, when you start acting like that, you are being anti-Semitic because you're anti-Jewish. I think if you, if you say that these values are Jewish, they're not. So Israel has been contributing, the state of Israel has been contributing to anti-Semitism or they call it anti-Semitism. If you, if you dislike, if you protest against this supremacy, you are called anti-Semitic. So they're producing a lot of things that they would call anti-Semitism. So Israel itself is producing the way it's acting. And when people protest, they say, no, you can't be like this. You can't be violent. You cannot commit genocide. Then the the first tool is to call people who are anti-apartheid, anti-genocide. Now they are called, uh, we're living in times when saying no to genocide is being radical. My God. So the tools are used are really perverse. When you ask me what kind of people they are, it's difficult because it is a democracy. Of course, they are like every other nation, diverse. And under each group, there are also diverse. Uh, maybe people. maybe the question is not what kind of people, but what kind of ideology is be, is, is is running them. And that's you. I think you explained already. Like. It's a I it, um, yeah, I would call it if you think about South Africa, uh, if you th- and South Africa and Ireland, but basically South Africa, um, the the whites when they like connected and the world was supporting them. You know that Israel supported uh, apartheid South Africa on the governmental level. Yeah, uh, so uh, I would call it if you need uh, some word for. Uh, um, like to understand it simply, it's a psychopath. Israel acts like a psychopath. Um, mm. it, it is built on, on uh, threats, violence, lies, a lot of lies. Um, and it's a psychopathic society. And it's also like, what's very obvious now, it's like what people now call gaslighting. Yeah? So when you, when you say stop the genocide, they try to make it feel like you are the guilty part because you are sort of, you support Hamas, no? So you caused all this, you know? Yeah. So you are the, so that's, I think also an, uh, one of the, one of the um, um, sort of things that belongs to, let's say the, the psychological pattern of a, of a psychopath is that he, he or she is never the problem. It's always the other that's the problem. Even if he's causing the problem, then he makes other others believe that they cause it. So, so. it's like 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 uh, saying, "Oh, did you say that Israel is killing civilians in Gaza? Did you say Israel is killing civilians? It is so. Hamas you are the- is killing people in Gaza, and I was like, "Wow, this is yeah. like this is the, yeah. this is like technically a psychopath." Uh, and on like TV, like nothing, and and with an angry voice, he was telling. Angry, me. yeah, angry. Yeah, very also angry. Also den- denying. So they do all sorts of things. So they deny that they are bombing, which is absolutely ridiculous. I've heard someone say, "We are not, we're not bombing." How, how while well, we see the things, um, there's no, there's no. The 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 Israeli ambassador to uh, uh, the UK said, "There's no humanitarian crisis in Gaza." How how come? So it's like. So you, what are you? You're making up story. Then they say, of course, they are bombing themselves. So Hamas is bombing them, or they say, yeah, we're bombing them, but you know, uh, Hamas started first. You know, uh, you know, this this all sort of mechanisms of of uh, when you say it's genocide, and you're like the, <clears throat> for instance, the Volkskrant, uh, one of our most uh, Zionist newspapers at the moment. Um, Told you know about the demonstrations in the Netherlands. Thousands of people of thousands of people went into the streets. But the frame of Volkskrant is thousands of people in the Netherlands, uh, you know, answered the call of Hamas to go to the, into the streets. 
because like we are now all Hamas supporters. You know, everyone who is against and genocide I, is a Hamas supporter. Yes, that's when I think I'm. I might sound like now uh, I'm very careful. I don't like conspiracy theories, but. When you ask me how come, like a media house, like the Volkskrant, who is not stupid, who's well informed, and starts speaking like Israel. Yeah. And when you ask me why are we afraid, we're afraid because we're seeing mechanisms and mm. dynamics that don't that don't make sense in Holland. No, of media, exactly. of politicians. I'm there must be something behind it that is it's not normal, huh? It's not it's normal. not normal. And yeah. like like I mean. Turkey might try the same thing if they're killing Kurdish people, but they won't succeed. Uh, and and uh, India might say the same thing when they're killing people in Kashmir, but they won't succeed. They won't if if they would try to influence Dutch media, they won't succeed, I guess. Um, but um, Israel's is is a different kind of story. And what I'm always surprised about is how much we go along with that. And how much, because I think they are informed, and how much they're scared there seems to be about Israel. You know, we were very tough against Russia as, as, as the major nuclear superpower. We were sort of, in, within one week, we had everything sanctioned. We had, uh, you know, boycotts. We had uh, universities stopping collaboration. We had, like, within one week after the uh, attack of Russia, we had everything sorted. And you could say this was in line with, with the international law because it was resisting like a breach of international law and uh you know it's not even a matter of we don't we don't even dare to do that but we are supporting it and it's um i think we don't dare to do that we don't dare to do that on but why are we so scared of us of we are not scared apparently of russia which is a nuclear superpower with a putin as president with a major army with a super nuclear arsenal etc with submarines with a huge army etc we are not scared apparently to to go against russia but we are scared again to go against this little tiny country in the in the middle east it's not a little tiny country and i think your question is the best way to end this just leave it in the air and ask why okay let's leave it in the air but then as my last question um because um we have to go to an end i think and maybe, uh, yeah, how to resist. We've tried to describe, we've tried to describe what's going on. We've tried to describe the, the horror of what's taking place in Gaza. We've tried to describe the the very, um, how do you say, cowardly response of the West, not only cowardly, but complicit response of the West. We've described the sort of attitudes that, that uh, you know, Israeli ruling class has adopted. Uh, how how and you 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 you've shared your your feeling of uh, being scared now in the Netherlands even if you see the same mechanisms that's happening in Israel so how to resist this from our perspective as being uh, as you started by saying you know privileged in the West um, many people go into the streets this is a good thing of course what else what what kind of strategies are uh, should be uh, adopted else to to stop as at first to stop the the extreme violence and the genocide in Gaza uh, and yeah that's maybe the first thing maybe that's let's focus on that how to go from here yeah as privileged people we have to keep um, to say to support all occupied people. I think this is so sad that uh, our um, European and Western politicians are putting all the money for pro-genocide while we cannot help now in Congo, we cannot help in Afghanistan, 20,000 people. So the world needs help. And we should put the money in places to build up love. I think it's all about love. If you love human, if you love the Jewish, if you love the whoever, every people, it's about love and you don't support death. It's basic. Um, so I think we, the privileged, should have a big table with multiple, multiple things, short term, long term, work on narrative, truth, work on the truth, always truth, 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 and always repeat international law, inter whatever, every time people say it's complex, I don't know, 
just say I, I need it, like I want to have a little paper that says international law and just put it ahead of everybody. You have it. There is an answer to everything. And just keep tapping that. Another thing is that if the carrot has not worked, we have now to take the stick of the ICC. It's in Den Haag, or I think they should move it away from Holland. I really should move it away from Holland. But just make a list of who has been complicit, like the media too, uh, tech companies, uh, ad administrators, uh, politicians, whoever has been even silenced. There are different uh, um, uh, laws in different countries that describe what being complicit means. But for instance, there are people who are just going forward, they have to think, okay, you personally will be sitting in jail. You personally will be sitting in jail. Um, we should do whatever. And now, like if they're during peacetime when everything was regulated and the minimum calories were given, about 500 trucks entered Gaza every day, 500 trucks. And, um, and that's uh, now they've had the first trucks. There were 20 trucks after everything was destroyed, after they've been without water, without food, without electricity. So they, they should have had a thousand trucks coming in. They had 20. And people start saying humanitarian aid is entering Gaza. So we have to be careful about how what we accept and what soothes us. So if people are injured in Gaza, when you say the number of injured, if you have no anesthetics, no medication, no clean water. Doctors have been using uh, soap on on uh, on burnt uh, children who have, they've used phosphorus, huh? um, and you don't have a bed to sleep in. People don't even have a street to live on. There are no streets in many places under the rubble at the moment. There are over thousand five hundred people because there are no there's no machinery to lift the rubble. So if you think of that being injured in these circumstances where there are no doctors, nurses, they bombed most of them. You're not injured. You are left to die very slowly in a lot of pain, slowly. So you don't count them as, as you know, people who were killed. So we have to think and we have to have answers. We have to help um, counter the media who's not doing this job, which is very simple. The media should have all the time, every morning, uh, how many were killed here on this side, how many killed on this side. You know, you should have just numbers, numbers, numbers are very important. And our media is not doing its job, not on the ground. They're not demanding we should go into that area. How can we make them do their job? I, I wish I had the, the wand. I always wanted to be the God. <laughs> I don't, we just have to, I think we're doing what we can, collecting the, the numbers, offering to the media. I think we should have a group that would go and speak to every head of media house. Like with with just numbers and facts, you here they are. You didn't do the job. Here we offer you this and make it public, mm. public meeting, a public meeting with 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 ministers, public meetings like face to face, which means this is difficult because it means we are trying to do the job of the ministers, of the researchers, of the media, of the law enforcement, everything. And it's very difficult. We we had a group of Palestinians and we were asked to meet the mayor and the mayor wasn't available because um, unfortunately her father had died and we meet the, met the vice mayor and the the Amsterdam um, representatives kept saying to everything, it's very complicated. It's very complex. And my uh, Palestinian friend, when we left, he said, wow, we're facing a genocide. We're trying to just like deal with that. And now all our time should go in unfolding the European guilt, which will take a few years because they didn't do their job. Now our job is to relieve them and tell them what it is. And then the other thing he said that was funny, he said that we kept repeating international law and they kept repeating, no, it's complex, it's complex. And then they were calling us emotional. You know, it was funny, like we are the emotional, you know, they're killing us again. And they were just, they just did not want to untangle their own. Basically, it's not only the guilt. Now they are committing another genocide too. 
and they know that and they just it's too complex it's too complex so um we do our best we do our best we have to like write down what what we can do and make different groups do different things not everybody do everything mm. fact checking fact collection putting it together icc media politicians schools mm schools and education but it has to be very simple because it is very simple we have to mm. repeat a few things international law return of refugees equality and these are supposedly the pride and joy of europe the pride and joy of holland the pride and joy of the gay capital of the world amsterdam mm -hmm. freedom equality like shouting this well, okay mm -hmm. talk to talk walk the walk no all right Let's fear all right. no fear no mm. fear mm. no fear right Omaya, thank you very much no fear i think that's very important um there's nothing to fear when you fight for the the right cause i think when you fight for humanity and love exactly. for love and humanity that's it yes Thank you very much. I think it's uh, that's a that's a that's a beautiful way to end. Um, uh, I I applaud you and I thank you, thank you very much for sharing your uh, story and perspective on what the the current uh, uh, you know the current horrors that are taking place. Um, and let's continue to be in touch and um, also strategize together. Uh, with many other people to see how we can change the hearts and minds of our own uh, people here in the in Western Europe. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Jacob. Thank you. And, love to okay. everybody. Lots of love. Thank you very much. Love. Bye. Bye.